how much do you attribute social media? Like we've had these peaks and valleys before, but we've never had this much attention through social media of people sharing their opinions on why maybe real estate is going to crash or there's going to be a 30 or 40% decrease. And that seems to be, you know, almost misguiding a lot of the people that are out there that uh, are taking these opinions to heart. Well, I, the, I think social media does play a part for sure. I mean, we're in instant information age, uh, like no time in history. And, and now information is being shared by people that don't always have all of the, the right information to, to express those opinions. And that's why it's critically important for shows like this and, uh, and, and for us in the industry to share the full facts so that people can make the right decision. They're just, right? And, and right now, unfortunately, when people see the social media posts or they see the headlines that the market is crashing and it's going to crash uh, you know, this is going to be the biggest crash of all time. You know, those kinds of dramatic phrases create fear in people's minds. And I think the the you know, it's good to be it's good to be informed and it's good to be cautious and it's good to be uh, you know making large financial decisions needs a lot of thought. And and to use a professional that can help you with that thought process is is the way to go. But to to use consume information that that is is using dramatic words to express information out there. Okay, I could say the market has has decreased by twenty five percent, but but if I leave it at that and say that's a huge crash, that doesn't express how people can take advantage of that, right? But if I then follow it up with by saying that if you are a move up buyer now. You know, if you're moving from the lower end to the higher end, it's typically what people are doing. You could save three, four, five hundred thousand uh, dollars and, and move up to that dream home of yours, which is going to continue to increase at historic work rate. There's no reason to assume that that the six percent, forty-five year historical rate of appreciation is not going to continue. Um, and so, when you look at the wealth creation from that, some of those headlines and some of those misguided comments prevent people from asking. And the only people that I know that have lost in real estate over the last 35 years that I've been in the industry are the people that waited and then couldn't afford the area that they wanted to move into and had to move an hour, two hours away and commute to work. Think about that. You know, when you have to move two hours away from your home uh, or from your work to commute, that's four hours, up to four hours of your life every single day. How many months a year are you spending on the road, right? So, so those people have lost out, and, and I like to educate people because right now, if you're a first-time home buyer, for example, uh, the condo market is a great market to get into, and the condo market has not decreased. In fact, it's stable. It's been stable throughout the interest rate increases for by and large. And so people who wait to buy condos, and let's say interest rates continue to increase by 50, 75 basis points, which is expected to happen, you know, all of a sudden, you're priced out of the market, and waiting is actually going to price you out. So that's what I think social media, and that's what I think the headlines have done, is they've created paralysis and inaction, which is hurting people in the long run. 